Right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Iconic Tactics for you today. And today we are looking at my man, Roberto Mancini's successful 4-3-3 that he used with Italy in the Euros last year. Um, heartbreak for us, but no doubt by far they were the best well-drilled side of the Euros and were very deserved winners. I'm going to show you a couple of clips. I'm going to show you why, how I've put it together, why I've done it this way in terms of replicating. Literally, all I've done, guys, is try and replicate the tactic as close as I possibly can. I've not tweaked anything to help me break the match engine and get an OP tactic. This is exactly, I think, as close as what you can get to a Roberto Mancini tactic. Go check out all the other videos after this as well. There's now five or six iconic tactics. And as always, tactic links linked over to FM Scout. Uh, there's a Steam, a Steam, Steam download and also a direct download that you can drop in your uh, tactics folder. All right, guys, let's go check out today's iconic tactic. Okay, so basically the formation, the general formation was a 4-3-3. If you're looking at the, the, posi the player positions, obviously here you've got Donnarumma. You would have had uh, Di Lorenzo, Benucci, Chiellini. This is kind of why I've chosen Juventus because obviously a lot of players quite realistic to what they were playing with. Um, this side would have been Spinozola, the, probably the best fullback in the competition. Then we would have had the Jorginho role with Verratti and Barella. Chiesa on the right. It would have been Insignia on the left and Immobile up front now a couple of things that i've tried to replicate in the game is basically here if we look at this little image basically here we're looking at what italy generally looked like in possession so it was spinners all around the left hand side getting very high that was then pushing insignia inside chiesa keeping a little bit of width barella very aggressive in the right half space Jorginho and Verratti would generally sit chiellini would come into that left hand space would often drive out from the back from that sort of like left left centre-back area, Benucci in the middle, and then Di Lorenzo would kind of stay a little bit narrow with obviously still Donnarumma in goal. Out of possession, they would sometimes line up a little bit like a back three. Now, I've tried at some points to put Spinozola in as a left, complete left wing back in terms of his starting position. I didn't get quite the balance right, but generally out of possession, we're looking at this where we would have Di Lorenzo quite narrow, Benucci, Chiellini. Spinozola would generally be a little bit higher anyway because of where he's starting position you're asking him to get forward a lot so naturally probably when we're defending his starting position or general position is going to be a little bit higher Insigne then tended to drift inside to make a little bit of a front two and then Verratti, Giorgino, Barella and Chiesa would often kind of look like he was playing as a white a white a right wing back okay so in the game we've got we've got the goalkeeper as a sweeper keeper on support the, the right back area, we've got wing back defend with a player instruction of sit narrow so we can sit in and help out uh, the two centre halves. Benucci was brilliant playing from the back. We've just got him as a ball playing, play, ball playing defender on defend with Chiellini as a stopper. Now, Benucci was the one who would tend to hit switch passes. He would often look for the sort of the wide plays and break lines. Chiellini was a little bit more aggressive in terms of definitely when he was defending so that's why we've got the stopper duty on but we've also got dual mark because you often saw him going into these left spaces that was could because Spinozola would go up high and Insigne would come inside it did give Chiellini that opportunity to, to bomb down that left flank uh, even at the age of what is he like 36 now 37 even at the age of 36 37 and on the left at left hand side We've not got any playing instructions. We've just got Alexandra, who was playing a Spinozola role, complete wing back on attack. In the middle, we've got Arthur, Jorginho role, deep line playmaker on defend. Rabio doing the Verratti role. This was an interesting one. Interesting, you boys that are watching, let me know your thoughts. What kind of role would you give him Verratti in this formation? I've just gone for an advanced playmaker on support. He kind of drifted into these areas sometimes to make a little bit of a 4-2-3-1. He would also get in these little left half spaces without getting too far forward. So I just thought an advanced playmaker on attack on a support was a little bit more realistic. I think if we went down the lines of a deep line playmaker, we would get him in here too much. And I think at times you want that central midfield or a little bit higher with, with the other central midfield. So it just allows a little bit of space in here for the deep line playmaker in, in this role, Arthur, to get on the ball. And then the Barella ball and then the Barella role. Mazzala on attack. I did start with it on support, but I just didn't get these dynamic runs. And now that I've put him on attack, he's getting into these areas here because Chiesa keeps quite wide anyway. So it was good to have someone in there. On the right-hand side, we've got the main man, Chiesa. And because it's Chiesa, I've asked him to shoot more often because he was firing shots off left, right and centre. 
On the left hand side, we've got uh, Insigne, Dybala. Um, I've put him to shoot more often because he was always cutting it onto that right foot. I've asked him to roam from position just so he comes inside a little bit a little bit more and get on the ball as a bit of a playmaker and also sit narrower so he doesn't necessarily start and hug the touchline be nice if he comes in here and then that and then the idea is from that then then he will create that overlap for alex sandro okay mentality we're looking at positive in possession wide attacking width spinners all are wide kiers are wide we've got an overlap left because we're asking that spinners all roll to get round the back and an underlap right because we've got kiers are quite wide I'm wanting maybe a Danilo to go in there, but in particular, I want that space. I want that underlapping run from Zakaria, my Mazala on attack, the Barella roll. That's the reason why I've done that. Higher tempo, shorter passing. When possession is lost, there wasn't, because it was international football and a lot of games were sort of like teams were trying to conserve their energy and trying to be a little bit restrictive. And I think, I think one of the main reasons why Italy was so good in the Euros because they picked players in their positions that they were playing for their club. They knew the tactic and could work on it pretty well. I think that was the success of how why Italy did so well. A lot of them were just playing in their generic roles that they played for their clubs. So I've tried to replicate. I thought counter press was a little bit too aggressive. It, no teams were really amazing at pressing. A lot were quite conservative. You know, even like the best probably the best team in terms of individual players Italy England very negative without the ball didn't do a lot of pressing or a lot of constant pressing over a longer period so I've just left that blank and the team will press when when it's the right time to do so counter-attacking we've got roll it out to center backs often the ball would go to Bonucci it would then go out out shifted out wide or into the middle third and obviously we've got Chiellini who we're asking to run with it um, and so we've asked the goalkeeper to roll it out Higher defensive line, Italy were very aggressive in terms of the line and higher line of engagement. Um, I've not put any other individual instructions on. So there you go. The tactic actually is pretty basic. It's a pretty basic tactic. But as I said, the key thing I think for Italy in the Euros was Insigne, Chiesa, Immobile, Verratti, Barella, Jorginho, Collini, all of them, Spinazzola. They all played their formations, their positions, what they did at their club, so they were used to doing it. I think the problem with England is switching to a 3-4-3, a lot of them didn't play it, a lot of them played different roles, Kyle Walker as a centre-back or something like that, and I think it's a big problem for international teams and managers is having to work with players, trying to move into different formations where Mancini just put them into what suited them best, and there you go, European champions. Right, let's see how it looks in the match engine. Okay, right, here we are. First highlight, we're just going to try and look at the, the, the main thing, the biggest threat probably up until sort of the semi-final when Spinozola got injured was the role here of the left wing back. As you can see, we're kind of playing there's Barella, the Barella role. That was McKenney in this game. Locatelli was playing the Verratti role. There's my Jorginho role sitting nice and deep, my two centre-halves. Danilo, I think, in a position where he can help the defenders out so he's not gone on looking for the overlap. That way, remember, we're asking him to sit in a little bit narrow and he's just on wing back on defend. And then we work it quite nicely. There is Insigne Dybala coming inside. Good overlap. Space. Space for Jorginho as well. Arthur to clip a ball over the top. And there we go. Not the greatest highlight, but they're just replicating how it works with Insigne moving inside and then Spinozola going around the outside. I'm just going to pause it in. Nothing really comes of it again, but just look. Here is Barella. Chiesa is hugging the touchline, and there's Barella moving into the space. If we could have worked it a little bit better, look, he would have been in acres of space. He was so good at Barella in the Euros, getting into that right half space. He's off again, look. Can we pick him out? I don't think we can, but he's in a good area. Chiesa has now gone long. Barella's coming back inside. It is actually McKenney, but there we go. Oh, there was an attempt. Attempted pass, but there you can see the Mazala on attack. Chiesa keeps his width and it just allows that space for your Mazzara on attack to drift into. Right, so here's a goal that we scored against Sampdoria. We're just keeping possession of the ball. Switching it out to our left back. Into Dybala. There's our Mazzara on attack. And look, it's because he's got into an advanced position and he's in sort of like a half space, it's sucked their left winger in, their left back in. And it's given Chiesa the opportunity to be free. Chiesa's on attack as well, winger attack. Does get quite narrow in the end. This is where we wanted Chiesa because we wanted him in here. It's kind of like in line with like the back post, I suppose, in terms of positions. And he fires it in. There we go. This little passage of play again. As you can see, 
the run, if we just bring that back just to touch the run, was pretty much an underlapping run. Remember, we're asking for underlaps on this right-hand side. So naturally, you would expect a, a winger to be on this right-hand side, but he sees the space. And he's in, he's on that underlapping run. And it just gives us an opportunity to get a, another player closer to the middle of the pitch. Remember, sometimes when you're playing with one up front, I think the natural thing is to obviously then play inside forwards, inverted wingers, because if you think of a winger, you think touchline and they're going to stay wide. And as you can see, he gets in because we're asking for that underlapping run. He's getting on the inside. And once again, he's in. Bad first touch, to be fair, from Kiesa and a bad finish. But the run was there. The movement was there. And another little one just with the movement is Chiesa. We're just going to highlight our centre forward in a minute. There's Amazala. We're quite tight. There's Flavovic, the Im Immobile. We're playing him as a complete forward because I just wanted to combine a little bit at the edge of the area. He does it really well. And once again, Chiesa getting in between that fullback and centre half. I think that underlapping run, I think, even though it's not necessarily an underlapping run, I think because we've asked we're asking for an underlap. I think it's encouraging that wide player to come inside a little bit more. I think if if we're asking for overlaps, he would probably keep his width a little bit more on that on that right hand side. But because the underlaps on, I think it's encouraging him to come inside and get in between that full back and centre half. Last little pattern of play, we've got uh, the spinner Zola on this left hand side, working with the advanced playmaker and, and Jorginho as well, sort of Verratti, working a nice little triangle. We saw this often. And then what we did was a couple of passes and then it was a switch to this far side. And there he is again, Chiesa, waiting for it. Couple of passes, once the opportunity, then a quick switch to the far post and Chiesa was always there. I think that's why I've got him on attack as well. So he gets closer to that back post and also shoot more often. And he gets in there and he's going to score you an absolute hatful. Maybe not Chiesa, a Sancho, a Raheem Sterling, all players that could do that very well. Even a player in the lower leagues, I think as long as... You've got winger on attack, shoot more often, they're going to get in at that back stick and score you plenty of goals. Chiesa was such a threat. The ball was often over that left-hand side. If you think of Insigne, Spinozola, Verratti working in triangles, and then it was a quick switch where they had that overload that sucked everyone across that left and a quick switch to the right towards Chiesa at the back stick. All right, boys, that is it. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's a pretty simple one. It's not taking me long to kind of put this together and see the bits that I wanted. If in anything, it's I've not seen as much, even though I've asked Chiellini to drive forward. I've, I've seen it a little bit and it definitely does it more, but it does it quite sensibly. You don't get that kind of gung-ho Chiellini run that we saw in the Euros. But you've definitely got the right back helping out. You've got the Verratti uh, and the Barella role. Them two roles work really well in the game and also Jorginho, that sitting role. And obviously then spinners all around the left-hand side, complete wing-back attack will do that for you all day long all right guys thanks for watching smash a like on today's video go go use it in your saves join in the discord let me know how it works for you and uh, thank you very much for watching see you next week let me know which tactic you would like to see next week cheers guys